You all know how much I've been loving my new LED mask, but I've been introduced to an exciting new gadget which will help you level up your skincare game, the Zip Halo. This device works differently to the LED mask. It uses microcurrent and nanocurrent technology, mimicking a face muscle workout that targets wrinkles, enhances plumpness, refines texture, and reveals a youthful radiance while promoting cellular growth and repair. After just three days, you'll notice a radiant glow and in just three weeks, noticeably smoother, brighter skin. It's super easy to use, which makes it a perfect addition to your self-care routine. You simply connect to the app and there are amazing treatment plans with easy to follow video tutorials that can cater to your every need. No need for needles, just embrace the glow and turn back the clock with Zip Halo. Head over to currentbody.com and use my discount code STYLEDNA for 15% off your purchase. Today, I'm going on a style journey with actress, TV presenter, philanthropist and entrepreneur, the gorgeous Geordie girl, Donna Eyre. Hello and welcome, Hi. Donna. Hello, Amanda. It's lovely to see you. Thank you for having me on your podcast oh in my your God. lovely home. It's a pleasure because I know you are super busy right now. So yeah. you're in, you're playing the part of Lauren in 222 at the Gilgood Theatre. Yes, I Tell am. Tell me about it. Oh my God, it's so much fun. I'm having a real, really good time. Um, it's kind of obviously it's long hours and there's lots of shows, but it has been an absolute blast. We have never laughed so much on a job. And it's just been. Now, is that because of the other actors or is it because of the storyline or? Yeah, I mean, I kind of love our little work gang family. Um, and I think we're all very happy with, the, you know, who's who ended up coming together because we just all really get along well and we have a lot of fun. Um, and even, you know, obviously, so the directors and the assistant directors, they've all done this before. Um, and that, yeah, they're just a really great team. So it's been, there's been a lot of giggles, which also helps. And the, the plot line of 222 mm. is? So it's, it's about four people having a dinner party and various things that happen throughout the evening. And a lot of things do happen throughout the evening. So I play Lauren, who is a psychotherapist. And I bring my boyfriend, Ben, to the dinner party of Sam and Jenny. And um, Jenny is, is a little bit um, unnerved by some things that have been happening in her house. So our, the point of the evening is to prove whether ghosts exist or not what fun and you say you play a psychotherapist do you what sort of research do you do before getting into the part for something like that um well everybody has their different ways of preparing for me um I always start with obviously I like to be off page so just learning all my lines because it gives you the freedom to be able to to do that I didn't quite get the chance to do that because it's quite a quick t turnaround what was the turnaround it was it was very tight it was very it? tight yeah I think um I went for the meeting on the Thursday they called me on the Thursday evening and said we'd love you to do it um so normally I would do my own prep before I even go into rehearsals but no I was straight into rehearsals but but when um After on the, the Saturday no <laughs> yeah, oh something my like god that, that makes it's me feel really sick this, yeah it's always the way in this business like okay so straight in so rehearsals. straight in and then we had a three-week rehearsal period um to get everything on its feet so obviously mapping out all the action because obviously it's not so much the lines it's all of the action because the choreography on the play obviously it's all these moving parts and everybody's choreography has to work together yeah very tightly otherwise the whole thing falls so yeah. every glass has to be filled at a certain amount it's got to be positioned in a certain position so yeah um and now obviously once we've got all of that all the hard work down then obviously it's just a moving train from there on it's just we, we don't even think about it now it's just second nature and then you must have gone into costume pretty quickly yeah and 
does that help you get into character? Did you have any input on that? Yeah, it it, it does actually. The costume is is really important. Well, we you would know that that mm. clothes can make mm. make you feel so different. Mm. Um, that's why clothes are such a wonderful thing for women, really, because yeah. they can make you feel you become what you wear, really. So yeah. it's um, so the clothes are very important. Um, and yes, and you know what, just being on stage has been such a great exercise again, because I think it teaches you to be bigger and to be braver, Yeah. you know, and so much of, you know, especially as we get older women, you know, you, you can be, get smaller and smaller. So it's a big reminder to just be brave and go big. And it's been wonderful to have the time to really get into the character and also the physicality of it, because it's a very physical play. Um, and to be able to really get into your body has been a real treat and a real joy. Because obviously when working on film and on camera, everything we do is yeah very small, very still. Yes. And it, your facial movements are very subtle on camera, yes. I would imagine. Yes. Do you have to exaggerate them? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of obviously the performance is getting it bigger and bigger and bigger and higher and higher. Because everything I do, or ha mainly the work I've done has been on camera and I as a performer prefer the the subtlety of yeah. doing things you know and feeling it on a smaller scale so it's been a really great exercise because you know you think it's ham or camp but it's going too big and they're like no just keep going bigger so it's it, and because they've done it they're they're a very you know they're a great um team it, it's wonderful when you can trust the people around you and we all have that so I, I trust that they, they know what they're doing so um it's been wonderful and yeah they know exactly what level it should be at and we're hopefully all there now do you have a sort of pre-show ritual yeah we do we do um so we do a warm-up every day yeah um so we do a little bit of vocal warming up we do a bit of physical warm-up um and that's just with the the, the, the six of four four, six of us on stage. Yeah. yeah. So we do that every day. And actually it makes such a difference because it's it's also just about coming together as a team. Well, I was going to say that because, you know, you hear particularly, who is it? It's Judy Dench that is supposed to be one of the naughtiest actresses on the planet <laughs> on stage. You know, she's f apparently forever playing Love pranks that. on her oh. on her co-stars yes there's and been a bit of pranks yeah it's because i mean i i mean i always think of when you start to you know if you start to lose it on yes. stage you've got nowhere to go yes exactly i was just trying to think actually i did play a prank on stacy on in rehearsals <laughs> thankfully she's still talking to me <laughs> what did you do <laughs> because we um stacy myself and our director isabel or we're playing what I love about Stacey she's a bit like me she's a bit of a hustler we're always thinking of you know production ideas we're, we're always Next creating something yeah and I yeah. think lots of women that yeah. I know are like that so we're always going oh we could do this we could do that so uh, what I love about Stacey she's a real grafter she yeah. works hard she seems to be yeah and I'm like that I've always worked and I love work so anyway we would you know like most people go how can we do this? And da, 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 da. oh, and we want, you know, we like to go shopping and like to book holidays. So we were like, let's go and get some. We were getting scratch cards in our lunch <laughs> So we had this sort of, this 222 syndicate. So everybody's going out going, I've got you some scratch cards today. It was so funny. So the director and Stacey and I were, do, were doing some scratch cards and it was my turn to go and get the scratch cards. So I bought Stacey a scratch card, but it was a fake one. <laughs> <laughs> so she thought she'd won. <laughs> she was really, really her little face. It was quite cute. I do have the video somewhere. What did she won? She'd won. <laughs> won. Yeah, so she, she had won £250,000 in her <laughs> lunch hour. <laughs> and she's thinking, you know, great, that's my kitchen paid for. So she's going, she's going, my new house paid for. <laughs> she's going, so she's, um, she's going, wait, what? We've won and the whole rehearsal room starts coming in and Stacey's very excited that we've won. And I was thinking, oh, I hadn't really thought this through because I've I've got it now. Now you've got a letter to tell her she hasn't. <laughs> so um, then I, I was like, oh, I 
put a tell her so I was starting to say to her, no, it's a, it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> and she wasn't accepting it. She's going, it's not, it's real. It's real. <laughs> Look at it. So she was putting the card in my face to show me that this card was real. I'm going, no, it's it's not real, Stacey. Um, <laughs> so there's, there have been some pranks. <laughs> and how long is the show running for? Um, it's on till August 4th. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a really great show. It's written so well because I'd, I'd been to see the show, well, be, obviously before I joined the cast. And I went to see Cheryl Cole in it actually and Jake Wood. And it, it's written by Danny Robbins, who's a great writer, really mm. amazing. And now that you've had the chance to really study the text and really get under it, there's so many things that you notice that I didn't see the first time when I saw the play and I think that's why we have a, have a lot of people that a lot of people do come back to see this show again and again because there are so many things that you might not have noticed the first or second time but there is so much going on in there and there are a lot of clues oh how lovely uh, the writing is really cl very clever and Danny Robbins is also a fellow northerner so he grew up in Jesmond in Newcastle where I grew up mm. um it was interesting talking to him about, you know, his process in writing the play because it really is, um, it's it's a really fun and clever show, actually. So it's 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 a real joy to be doing it. Oh, I've, I've got to come and see it. Um, what other um, projects are brewing at the moment? Yeah, there's a lot. I'm, I've got a few things that I'm kind of noodling on myself very slowly, albeit. Um, so I'm doing a little bit of writing. Um, there's a few things that I'm producing and exec producing, so that's quite fun. Um, TV or? Yeah, yeah, film and television projects. Um, so lots of things in development, which is great. And also, um, yeah, I'm kind of just reading scripts to see what I would like to do after 222, now that I'm all warmed up in the theatre and all. What would be your dream role then? You know Absolute what? dream, dream role. Um, do you know what? I do like the comedy stuff, and this obviously the play is 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 comedy to, um, and I like the speed of it actually because comedy looks very, but it it uh, occupies my brain because it's the speed and you've it's got very to be active. very alive. To yes, it, you've got you? to be very alive, and there's always a lot going on. There's a lot of action. It's very physical and it's very pacey, and I kind of enjoy that. Um, but oh, you know, there's so many great. Things and I, I just love really interesting, strong female characters, and I'm finally getting those parts now. I'm getting older, I'm getting more interesting roles. But isn't that wonderful? Yeah, because I mean, it was only probably a decade ago yeah. that that would not be happening. Yeah, unless it was yeah. specifically this is a 40 year old woman yeah. or this is a 60 year old yeah. woman. There's definitely a lot. Things are moving slowly, but that, yeah, it is because um, I was always very nervous about investing too much time into being an actor because I did always think it's a business that will just spit you out at yeah. 40. And actually, thanks to a lot of women before us, actresses and directors and things, things are there is definitely much more for, uh, you know, for my age group. Yeah. And. And above, really, yeah. as it should be. As it should be. But it's, it's lovely. I, I love the phrase, holding your toes to the fire. And I, I think there's something very refreshing about as we get older and go through different chapters, we just sort of give ourselves a new challenge, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, today we're going on a style journey. OK. So how did you decide what you were putting on to come here today? I didn't really think about it that much. I, actually, I did. I did change. I, what did I, I had a sweat. Well, obviously, the weather is very confusing. So oh, my God. It was freezing yeah, this morning. It was freezing. So I had a sweater on. And then I was like, mm, I need to put something a bit cooler on. And also just something a bit fresher because it's spring, right? I know. Well, it's supposed to be. Summer. I mean, how far are we off summer itself? Yeah. So, um, but I generally don't really think about what I'm wearing that much anymore I'm much more comfortable I basically my style DNA every day is probably pale denim jeans and a white t-shirt not <laughs> no but that is it like just t or like really comfortable t-shirts and yeah. a really nice denim and your blouse today oh this is Vilshenko actually very pretty um yeah 
but I am yeah I'm just happy in t-shirts and jeans literally yeah. that's my go-to it's a good uniform isn't yeah. it yeah yeah now you grew up in Newcastle I Newcastle did. Newcastle I say. were you very aware of your mother's style I think most children subconsciously are always aware of their mother's style mm. um there's something about my mom that's always been very elegant that and I think has definitely influenced me but you started acting at the tender age of 10 mm. was it how did that in Biker Grove how did that come about? Um, I was doing drama groups and classes and things because I had lots of energy. And the producers go around schools and theatre groups and ask people to do background work. So I was doing extra work. Mm -hmm. You know, you paid, I don't know, 20 bucks or whatever to go and on and be a walk-on yep. to do background work. So I was doing that, actually. And then one of the producers saw me on the monitor and asked if I would audition for a principal role of Charlie Charlton, which I did, and the rest is history. Uh, amazing. I mean, do you remember the costumes? Yes, I do remember my costumes, actually, because I actually had quite cool costumes, and it was the first time, you know, people would come in with great clothes for me to wear, and I just thought that was so amazing. But growing up in Newcastle, clothes, like I think for a lot of Newcastle women, they're kind of, I mean, the whole week for me growing up was geared towards my Saturday night outfit. Well, that is my next question, because yeah, it's got a quite a club scene, hasn't it, yes, Newcastle? I really um, put lots of time and thought into planning my outfits mm -hmm. um, as a teenage girl. And I remember them, you know, there'd be like a pencil skirt look with a shirt. And I remember once a silver fishnet dress over a silver bikini. which caused <laughs> For clubbing. For, for, which caused some arguments with my father on the way out of the house. <laughs> it kind of basically went, you're not going out like that. And I think I responded by saying, yes, I am. And he said, Watch no, you're me. not. <laughs> and it kind of went on like that for a while. <laughs> Did you get out? I'm not somebody that ever really backed down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm definitely being paid back now with my own daughter because neither is she. Yeah, We're but quite I, feisty women. I think that it does go full circle, doesn't it? She doesn't. Um, she also knows her mind. So I wonder where that came it's, from. It's, it's a good thing, but uh, obviously raising it can have its moments. You then went on to set up Biker Groove, which I thought was incredibly... Another my pop group. Yes, your pop group. <laughs> How did you go about choosing your stage looks for that? Was that was that an important part oh of who God. you were? So my pop star days, that was so much fun because we were signed to a London record company. So obviously we went and toured Japan, America. Um, our songs charted better overseas than they did in the UK. Incredible. So we would go, we had like, I think we had the second biggest selling single in Texas at one point. <laughs> which I met up with an old MTV buddy and he said Beyonce loved our track or something when she Ooh. came on my show. There's all these memories coming back that I actually forgot about. So we, the record company would, you know, would get to go buy clothes, which I kind of, obviously we were paying for, but you sort of, it doesn't feel like you are when the yeah. record company takes you shopping. Yeah. So we'd go and buy, I remember going, do you remember Voyage, that ridiculously yes. expensive store on the Fulham Road? It was just so fun being able to go to all of these shops and buy designer clothes that I'd never really bought before. Spending the profits. Yeah, spending the, literally, that it, my money has always gone on clothes. Um, so I bought these silver trousers in Voyage with a silver top. That was one pop video. Um, and then also we were traveling a lot on tour, so, you know, that. In America, I remember calling my mother from a mall, crying down the phone, going, please, I need some money to eat. She's like, where's <laughs> all your money gone? She's like, but the record company are giving you money for meals and per diems. I was like, I know, but I've spent it on these shoes and Prada. Because <laughs> I would literally be staying in like malls in Vegas and I would spend, I, would, I just wouldn't have any sense. I'd just see the shoes and buy them, you know, so I'd buy the shoes. I remember once I was in Gucci in Vegas and I bought these beautiful little white gloves. I thought, oh, they'd be fabulous in my next pop video. So I get all the way to the airport. 
I'm thinking I'll put my gloves on, my new little Gucci gloves. I was only about 16. I mean, you were a kid. Yeah, so I was putting my Gucci gloves on. There's like one in the box. So I'm furious. I go all the way back to Gucci before I miss my flight. (laughs) And I go to the guy in the shop. I'm like, you know, this is just not really on. I bought these gloves and there's one in the box. And now I'm really going to miss my flight. And he looked at me like, oh, this poor, stupid girl. He's like, ma'am, it's a golf glove. (laughs) I was like, oh. Okay, do I look like I play golf? <laughs> then he tried to sell me another one. So I was um, so I was like, okay, contemplating buying another one so I'd have a pair. This is so stupid. I mean, so stupid. Fashion gets all young women. It's terrible. And, and he was trying to sell me the same hand. So I was like, do I look like I have two right hands? Did you make the flight? Uh, I'm not sure, but I... I had my gloves and that's all I cared about growing up was my outfits. <laughs> but when you were part of the band, did you have a stylist that came with you or were you just allowed to run riot um, with the wardrobe? We had stylists at various points, but obviously we'd also just do yeah. what we wanted. Just went rogue. And what have, what's happened to all of that stuff? I've given it all away. My daughter is horrified. That's a shame, isn't it? Because she's like, where is that um, Dolce & Gabbana leather biker jacket? You remember the one that Victoria Beckham had as well? We all had one. Yeah, we did. And then it's come back round now. She said, like, where is that? I'm like, well, I don't know. I think I was, pr- I was just throwing bags of clothes away and giving them, giving them away. I had two stepdaughters as well. so Yes, but then at least it was getting a new life. Yeah, so I just, you know what? I've never really been that attached to things. And so I'm, I always enjoy giving it away and, you know, my sister or what have you. So... Yeah, so there's been so all the Dior saddlebags when they first came round in the 90s. My daughter's now going, where are all your Dior saddlebags again? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, where are all your Fendi baguettes? I'm like, uh, I don't know. She's like, mom. Mm. So I've now got to buy them all again. Because no, you don't. My daughter said, like, I really want this. And I want that. So I'm like, I can't believe I'm actually buying this handbag for the second time round. <laughs> You were with Damien Aspinall for many years. In Mm -hmm. fact, he's the father of your daughter, Freya. Yes. Did he have opinions on what you wore? Was he into clothes? No. Do you know what? I have to say what I will say about Freya's father, actually. When we were together, and again in the 90s, he was always incredibly generous. He'd love to take people shopping and stuff like that. So we always had very fun shopping trips. But no, he never... I don't. I don't think he would have dared tell me what to wear. Your girlfriend knows must have than that. loved you. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Uh, yeah. I mean, even now, if I come in, he he he'll make fun of what I'm wearing and stuff. He'd be like, oh, "Yeehaw! I'm wearing a hat or something." Or I mean, where are you going in those trousers? You know. So we're all, as a family, we're always making fun of each yeah. other. I mean, you seem very at ease in your skin. Do you think you use clothes to message at all? Not so much. I mean, to be honest, I'm very, very comfortable in any room in wearing anything, actually. I don't really feel the need to conform. I would happily go to a black tie and a pair of jeans and a T-shirt and sit there quite happily or to a a meeting, you know. Um, I probably have conformed a bit in the past. But, yeah, I think you can get your message across with clothes. You know, sometimes if you need to put those pair of heels on for a certain meeting when you need to have some presence or something that makes you feel a bit stronger or tougher. When do you think you really discovered your style DNA? Probably in my 30s. That's quite young. Yeah, maybe late 30s. Yeah. It's amazing. I'm surprised given how many, how much I've experimented. How many chapters? How many chapters there's been in there that I didn't find it sooner because I did start quite young. (laughs) If someone were to describe your style DNA in three words, what would you want those three words to be? I'd want them to be truthful. So I think um, they would be comfortable. Um, It would be timeless. And I think it would be quality. I like to wear, like to feel, like to feel nice things. Are you 
conscious of your shape affecting the clothes that or your yes. choice of the clothes? Yes, I now yes, for sure. Um like there are certain things that I was, just wouldn't wear for my shape. Like cropped trousers and cropped sleeves are not good because I know you're emphasizing all my wrists and my ankles and then people go oh she's so thin I'm like it's because you're showing off your ankles and your wrists you know so I'm aware of things like that now after years of dressing I was going to say are you very aware of um criticism um I don't care about any criticism I actually don't I've never really cared about I'm quite um resilient yeah so I'm I'm, I don't care at all kind of Geordie girl yeah I I honestly do not give a shit (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what do you um, what do you reach for when you want to feel empowered? I like a strong I like a blazer. I like suits. Mm. So I love a nice oversized blazer. I like trousers or jeans. Sometimes a like a sturdy heel. I don't wear you know, I think none of us are really walking around in the heels that we used to. It's, I mean, it's extraordinary when you think, I, I sort of think back to... I think something sturdy and strong. You know, we used to wear heels all day. It's crazy, right? Yeah. It is crazy. Yeah. Now I'm like, there's no way I'm wearing those shoes. Yeah. <laughs> I said it to, I said at work the other day, I said, they're not paying me enough, right? And I was like, I was made a joke about, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm not wearing those shoes unless, you know, obviously if you go to work and you're paid to wear whatever you're meant to wear. But it came out wrong because I said, I'm not wearing those heels unless someone's paying me. And it just <laughs> all sounded a bit wrong. <laughs> not paying you in that way. <laughs> um, who would you consider to be your style icon? It's so funny because even growing up as a young girl, I had pictures of women on my walls, not really men. Yeah. I had like Kylie and Madonna and I just loved women that were and Tina Turner and, you know, women. I remember, you know, growing up watching Diana Ross and all these oh, women yes. that and the Supremes. And I loved women that could move and perform. I was obsessed with women who would change and, and use clothes to do it. I just found it the most amazing thing. And that's what I grew up watching. Yeah. Were women performing and expressing themselves through clothes and I was just kind of yeah entranced by it all I just thought wow that's so beautiful would Taylor Swift be on your wall now yeah I think she's kind of cool Mm. I mean it's not she's kind of phenomenal right amazing completely um I I think all these young women are so impressive they seem to have their shit together so much more they're also focused right they're incredible. I mean, we were just all tearing around parties and <laughs> having a good time. You know, all these young women, they've got brands, they've got businesses, they're making, you know, like there's their own CEOs. It's kind of really impressive. Yeah. Yeah. It, it I mean, really is. It's just a very different this, era, though, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I mean, my daughter is so on it. You know, she's, you know, she's just so switched on and focused and and driven and I'm like oh my god I really wasn't like that at 20. Is age a consideration in how you dress? You know what I probably sometimes do think about it and actually we shouldn't. But do you think about it in a way that oh I am x I can't wear that or I I shouldn't be wearing that? Yeah and that's wrong yeah it's so wrong but yeah I probably would think I know I probably wouldn't be walking around in a pair of leather hot pants anymore because I think, mm, but actually I probably could. But then You're again, so good. Oh yeah, no, I so I totally could actually. But I just, it's probably because it's not my style anymore, yeah. more than an age yes. thing. It's yeah. just not m- my s- style. But if I wanted to, I certainly would. Yeah, I'm co- Yeah, I I don't really. And then the other thing is just if I've been, you know, if I feel fit and strong then I kind of wear anything yeah we talk about hair makeup and manicures oh god I my nails are terrible don't look at my nails you're on stage so it's sort of I know, in it's the so distance nice being on stage so I was saying <laughs> Stacey she's like I've got to get my nails done I was like oh don't worry about it nobody can see your nails from back there <laughs> <laughs> but what's your what's your sort of go-to in terms of hair m- Blow dries. Yeah, although, do you know what? I've even, I mean, I, I, I did have a blow dry today for you. 
but it looks gorgeous. I know, I've stopped blow drying my hair. I kind of don't even like the blow dried look anymore. I'm really just, I everything. I'm just all about saving time, money, and being simple. Yeah. I just also, I just dry it myself, right? Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I think, <laughs> I actually, can't believe that we've all been so like. I know, but sometimes it can be quite aging to be too done. Yes. Yeah. 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 I agree. So I kind of prefer no makeup and no blow dry, if I'm honest, in my jeans and a T-shirt. And that's me. That's your happy place. Yeah. Now, you have done countless red carpets, probably more than you choose to remember. Have you ever used a stylist for those? I have. Yes, I've used many stylists over the years, but actually not for a very long time because I kind of know what I want and what I don't want. And I end up doing it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, as a celebrity, as an influencer, you must get showered with a lot of clothes, a lot of gifts. How yeah, do you handle you know that? What? I don't really, I think it's all, quite, I mean, it's always lovely, obviously, if people send you gifts. I'm always very grateful. But actually, I don't really court it and I don't really accept too much because yeah. it's, I don't need stuff. I don't need free stuff. It's not a lot I need. Yeah. If you could be dressed head to toe in one brand, what would that be? I mean, well, Laura Piana is always very comfortable, isn't it? <laughs> she goes right for the top. <laughs> or we wear that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just I'd be very happy in an organic cotton T-shirt. Would you say you've had a worst fashion moment? Oh, God, there's been many horrendous <laughs> fashion moments. Is there one in particular that stands out? I do remember some Mew Mew yellow cowboy boots in the 90s that did spark quite a... I remember everybody got them after that. I think I was the first, and then I do remember at least three or four of the Spice Girls getting them. Meg Matthews also got some. Um, there was a Roberta Cavalli dress that was not a great look on me. There was also a head-to-toe Dior look that was a little bit fashion attack. Okay, so run me through the Cavalli. I think it was a Cavalli dress and there was Cavalli boots. You know, if you, you, the designers send you stuff and you're just dressed so you, head to toe in the, the look. And you and took it's it quite literally. a lot. It's quite a lot. Mm. And I guess, yeah, there's, I mean, when I look back at all those pictures in the 90s, it's so funny because I think they look awful. And my daughter's like, oh, that was so cool. Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, it's awful. She's like, no, that's so nice. Because oh, I guess, sweet. yeah, how sweet. I think the nineties was a an interesting fashion decade. I they loved the nineties. It was fun. It was certainly fun. Yeah. Let's talk about travel. Um, I know you travel quite a lot. I know I've ran into you at various airports, yes. haven't I? <laughs> I do remember seeing you in an airport once, and I thought, oh my god, she's so chic. You tra- you literally just. Travel so well. Oh, you're you're very sort of probably because I do a lot you of do. it. Yeah, so you and you could. Re- I was like, I was. I remember staying at you in the airport once. Going, God, that travel look is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But do you? And I'm I'm sorry. I don't even remember what you were wearing. But do you pay particular attention to what your airport look would will be? Depends who I'm traveling with. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so for a lovely. Weekend no, away, mean, add, uh, again, it's comfort. Yeah. So, and, and layers, obviously, on a plane. So it'll be like a cotton T-shirt and a cashmere jumper. A lot of Laura Piana. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. Good packer, bad packer? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty good. I am. Um, I'm actually very good because I actually hate having stuff. So I could literally live in two dresses for a month. You're a light packer. I'm a light packer. My daughter, on the other hand... I think there's a caveat here. <laughs> it is insane. I honestly do not know how they let her on the plane. And then she'll call me and complain about how much she's been charged for her baggage. And I'm like, Ooh. well, obviously, you've got five gigantic suitcases. What's your favourite brand of luggage? I like Ramoa. Yeah. I like Ramoa, but again, I don't really care. I mean, it's a suitcase, right? Yeah. Just whatever is light, the yeah. lightest case possible. Yeah. Do you think you've got a guilty secret brand? 
I mean, I do spend quite a lot of money on underwear as well, which is a bit ridiculous. Ooh, I, I just like from? to feel nice. Yeah. I like nice underwear. And where would that come from? I don't know. I just go to like Salford or something. Ooh, and I love um, my daughter's also got quite nice um, nightwear. I mean, I've never seen a little girl get so dressed so well for bed. <laughs> so funny. What's your high street favourite? Sorry, I know it's not a high street brand, but my favourite brand right now. Can I just talk about Relux? Tell me. So Relux is all pre-loved and pre-owned. And I have got some some great stuff on there recently because I'm like, why would you spend all of that money as well on a handbag when you can buy it pre-owned, right? And also it's not putting any, any you're not manufacturing anything new, right? Mm. Which just makes so much sense to me. So I'm I'm actually buying a lot of pre-love stuff on Relux because I just think it's so great. I got like an amazing um, Celine jacket on there for like next to nothing. It was fascinating. And are you loving the hunt as much as the actual trophy? I just think we are making a lot of new stuff and this planet really doesn't need it, does it? Yeah. We have a lot. We've got so much stuff. Yeah. Why do we need to keep manufacturing, manufacturing, manufacturing? Um, and I grew up actually before I could afford designer clothes. I grew up, you know, buying in charity shops. Yeah. I would always, you know, we I'd find some great things, um, and I don't know why we can't share. <laughs> yeah, and it's a great way of honing your sense of style too, because yeah. somehow if you've bought it in a charity shop, it doesn't feel quite such a a crime if you've got it wrong because yes. actually it can go back again exactly and it doesn't feel so wasteful yeah um but when you're buying an expensive item have you ever justified it at pounds per wear mm. <laughs> my daughter does that a lot <laughs> i've heard we're that not a lot talking about her, we're talking about you i've heard that a lot <laughs> so talking about sustainable fashion your approach is I think buy, buy less, which I definitely do. I honestly, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I, I, I don't need anything really. Let's be honest. I'd rather travel. I'd rather have an experience. Mm. So I'm much more geared towards that. Mm. Um, you know, we're just all a little bit more, we're a bit more savvy as well, right? We, you know, we all don't want to waste our money, right? It's not yeah. the time for wasting money right now. Um, and it's certainly not the time to be putting extra impact on the yeah. environment. Yeah. You are a good practical Geordie girl. Yeah. I love it. I like to be efficient. So <laughs> pre-love for me. Relux is a win. Relux. Check it out. Let's turn to some quick fire questions. Mm. What fashion advice would you give your 20 year old self? Save your money. <laughs> <laughs> Which fashion trend would you like to see make a comeback? Era would be 70s because I love that. The, you know, and that that does come around a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's never really out, is it? The You'd be fled... amazed how many people say the seventies. Yeah, the it's fled a popular jeans one. And the... What fashion or beauty trend would you consign to room one hundred and one? Eighties can go in there. Yep, we do. I wasn't a big fan of that. Your last impulse buy? I just bought a Gabriella Hearst dress, which I quite like. Views on tattoos? Not for me. Beauty treatment you couldn't give up? Anilla, my eyebrows. My brow girl. High end or high street? I'm happy with either. Bling or bear? Bear. Minimalism or maximalism? I'm more minimal minimalist. Crocs, cute or puke? Oh, no. There's no puke. Sne Never. Crocs. Sneakers or stilettos? Sneakers. Skinnies or boyfriends or wide legs? Boyfriends. Bodycon or boho? Oh, bodycon. Sports lux or rock chick? Sports lux. Red carpet or relax? Relax. Trend or style? Style. Colour or monochrome? Colour. Experimental or uniform? Uniform. Cashmere or cotton? Oh, that's the hardest one in there. Cashmere. Hoarder or editor? Editor. Shapewear or sexy lingerie? Shapewear. Tights or stockings? As in high tops? Could be. 
Yeah, I like the ones that just stay up. Bikini or one piece? Oh, both again. Beanie or berry? Beanie. And finally, at the end of the day, what do you or don't you wear in bed? I like nice cotton or something comfortable in bed. Donna, thank you for being such a great guest. It's thank been you. great fun to go on this style journey with you. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me on your show. I really love it. You're so good at it. Thank you. Well, I'm going to come and see your show. Oh, yes, you must. Definitely. You must. Definitely. It's fun. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.